Do y'all know where the smartest people in the world typically go to work besides BDGE? Very, very, very big average brain size. So if you look at number two through probably 10 in terms of jobs with biggest brain sizes, the majority of those are going to fall into finance, somewhere in finance and banking. You know why? Because if you're really smart and you go in finance, you make a lot of money, particularly things that revolve around the stock market. The stock market's cool, whatever. If you want to invest there, happy for you. To the normal person, it's impossible to understand the stock market. Everything goes up after, uh, you know, 10 years, 15 years, the average goes up, but you can invest into companies that are shit. The overall market will go up. However, you guys don't know what you're investing into for the most part. You don't know the underlying workings of the typical company. And I need y'all to understand that this video I'm making right now is not an advertisement. Despite us working with this company, Mojo, who has created a sports stock market, this video should be extremely valuable to y'all for a few different reasons. And I'll explain them as the video goes by. Their office is five blocks away from our office in, in Manhattan. I've been there many times. They have a massive team. In order to get a stock market type game legalized, you have to have a bunch of very, very smart people watching maintaining and staying on top of the markets 24 seven around the clock. And they have that. They have market makers. They have people from Harvard, people from Goldman Sachs. They have people from Ernst Young running and maintaining these markets 24 seven. And by markets, every single skill player for the most part in the NFL has a share price attached to them. And the share price is based on projected future statistics of their NFL career. Hopefully by this point, you could see where I'm going. I got in a meeting with them and I said, yo, you have to give me every skill player rookie going into the draft this year and you know they're like cool yeah let's get the rookies on the app and i'm like no what you don't know is i'm actually reverse engineering your harvard mathematicians and finance people and scientists and really smart people that i can't afford to pay to make me a set of rookie rankings they have algorithms they have numbers they have really smart people calculating a share price for a player a share price that is the future value of a player based on their projected statistics this my friends is what we call a dynasty ranking the mojo app is basically providing for you a completely free dynasty ranking without them really knowing it. Because that's not the point of the app. The point of the app is for you guys to invest in players that you like, hopefully win money over the course of their careers. But the app is completely free to download. So go to the app store. I will link it down below, whether you're on iOS or Android. Download it, and then you can filter it by just college players. And there you have it. If you ever need a reference, if you ever need rankings based on very smart people's very smart calculations, you have it there. You can actually play, download, and invest money into the app if you are in New Jersey. Only New Jersey is legal right now. They're working on getting it open in multiple states. But anybody anywhere can download and use the app and see these players. So today's video, I'm going bar for bar with these very smart people, less smart than I, smaller brain per average per capita. And I'm going to tell you why their rookie rankings are not as smart as they think they are. Or maybe I'm going to sound like an idiot by the end of this video. Whatever the case may be, tuck your shirts in, download the Mojo app. Let's eat. So the one caveat here as it relates to quarterbacks is they're always going to be the most highly valued player in terms of share price. The Patrick Mahomes, the Tom Brady is the Amazon or the Google of Mojo. You're going to have these guys priced higher than the other positions, just naturally the, the way that they progress throughout their career. But where I think it is very useful is looking by position. Maybe Hendon Hooker at $15 being above Bijan Robinson does not mean you should take Hendon Hooker above Bijan Robinson in your rookie draft. But I think it's interesting if you filter by quarterback and then you say, oh, okay, based on the price tiers, Hendon Hooker, very clear quarterback five, far below the first four quarterbacks, but way above quarterback six through 12. So I think that's where this could be useful. Now, a lot of the prices on the app are based on, like I said, future statistical value, future stats at the NFL level. And a lot of that is derived from draft capital. So a lot of the projections right now, you know, you have a $40 price tag on CJ Stroud, Bryce Young, that is projecting them basically to be the franchise quarterback of their team for their rookie contract into their second contract. And you can look on the app to see, you know, compare them to other NFL players, whether it's like Tua or any of these guys and where they're priced at to get a, a projected value of how long their career is probably supposed to be. Just to quickly rip through the rank, like you could see price wise Stroud and Bryce Young are up there in their own tier then you have Anthony Richardson at three and you have Will Levis at four they're kind of in a tier together but you could see the rankings of it CJ Stroud Bryce Young Anthony Richardson Will Levis Stroud and Young are very very similar in price next to each other which is probably their way of saying we see Stroud as the number one pick we see Bryce Young as the number two pick and then Anthony Richardson obviously comes with a lot more risk so he's ten dollars less in share price which again should speak some sort of volume to you 
but I kind of quickly wanted to go through their, you know, their entire like flex ranking. So I took the quarterbacks out of the picture. I wanted to go position by position. And then I wanted to look at where my biggest differences were in my personal rankings, which are available right now on BDGE.co. The rookie draft guide is officially live. So like everybody on planet earth, they have Bijan Robinson as the RB1 in a tier by himself. His price clearly yells that. Then they have Jameer Gibbs, Zach Charbonnet, Devon A-Chain, Sean Tucker. Sean Tucker is the first name that kind of pops out to me here as the RB5. There have been a lot of people that really, really like Sean Tucker. And there are a lot of people that think he's far overrated. We did not see him get to perform at the combine. He did his own pro day, which he was like timing himself, like as he was fuck- insane behavior from people at their own pro days. Sean Tucker at RB5. I think what this will do is it kind of puts, a, if you're bowling, it helps you put bumpers on the side. I might've had Sean Tucker at like RB17. I'm like, okay, if these really smart people have Tucker at RB5, maybe I need to split the difference there. Maybe I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Maybe they don't. But they're also working with the government and the law and really, really smart and building algorithms where I'm just sitting here like, I don't like what I just saw in that one fucking play on all 22 film from a Patreon that cost me $2 a month in order to watch the film. So there's probably a gap somewhere in there that tells me I probably need to be a little bit higher on Sean Tucker. Maybe this is their way of saying Sean Tucker is going to get sneaky draft capitals, draft capital that you don't expect him to get. I also thought it was really interesting that Zach Evans was the RB6. Noah, co-host mate on this channel, love Zach Evans, has gotten a lot of heat for it. Maybe he's on to something there as the rb6 his price of 643 is above zay flowers now you could do what you want you could short players on this app you could long players for their entire career if you think all these are priced way too high i think just looking at one guy compared to another guy like i look at that and i'm like i would rather have shares of zay flowers and zach evans just for the longevity of the position just for the talent level just for where i think the draft capital difference is going to be there but maybe they know something that we don't so zach evans at rb6 i think it's something worth noting after zach Evans, they have Tank Bigsby, they have Izzy Abanacanda, Kendry Miller as their RB9, so maybe let's come back down to earth. Deuce Vaughn at RB10, Tajay Spears at RB11. I think that's kind of interesting because nobody in fantasy has that shit happening. Everybody loves Tajay Spears. He's now like a top five, top six back in this class. They're saying, hold the motherfucking phones. Where I think possibly the most interesting ranking in this entire class is Roshan Johnson down at RB15, a price of $3.12. I've been relatively vocal. I've been very vocal relative to fantasy Twitter about how much I don't think Rashawn Johnson is going to be like a fantasy stud. I think people are trying to comp him to like Miles Sanders, really like all he needed was his chance and he would be a workhorse bell cow. Rashawn Johnson's got a lot of admirable traits. He's big. He could pretty much do everything at an above average level. I'll leave it there. But I don't think in terms of fantasy, which again, their value is based on future statistics. So it all does come back to fantasy in the end. Tells you he's the RB15 in this class. I don't think my concerns about Rashawn Johnson are unwarranted based on the price tag for what we're seeing here on the Mojo app. Now, I do think he'll be one of the bigger risers on this app come draft day because I would be shocked if he's not drafted above the guys that are going before him right now. Eric Gray, Kenny McIntosh, maybe Chase Brown, Deuce Vaughn, Tajay Spear. Like, I could see Roshan Johnson getting draft capital above literally the 10 dudes that are ranked ab- above him price-wise on Mojo. I and mean, then you guys can check out the running backs underneath him. I'm not going to go too in-depth from RB16 to 25 because most of those guys fall off the face of the earth within the length of their rookie contract. Moving over to wide receivers, they have Jordan Addison as the wide receiver one still in this class over JSN. They have Quentin Johnson, kind of the next tier of guys. So basically there's there's a very clear tier here. You have Addison and JSN right next to each other. You have Quentin Johnson. He is much closer to that tier than he is to the tier underneath him, but you see a massive drop off, almost $3 in share price from Quentin Johnson down to Jalen Hyatt, Josh Downs, Zay Flowers. And then you see another tier break, Marvin Mims, Kayshawn Booty, Nat Dell, Tank Dell. So you can start to piece together values of the tier tiers in this class. And that's where I think this stuff is really valuable. I wouldn't say like, you know, you need to obsess about, oh, they have him at 13 and then they have him at 14. The share price is basically this built-in tier structure for you to understand algorithms and understand where these numbers and the calculations start to rank players, draft capital, longevity in the in the NFL. I think this makes a lot of sense, these tiers based on everything we've heard from like draft projection and, and talent and stuff like that. But Hyatt Downs flowers in a tier by themselves. Marvin Mims is ranked a wide receiver seven here. I have him so much lower. I'm one of the very, very, very few people. I don't think I've heard anyone say anything bad about Marvin Mims. I'm kind of off him. I plan to do a video like five to seven guys that I am that I hate in this class that are far lower than at least based on their ranking and their age. ADP. Mims is one of those guys for me. So I don't want to waste a lot of time here right now talking about it because we'll do a full video breakdown of it. They still have Booty at, at wide receiver eight on a pre-combine. He was probably like five, six. Nat Dell's interesting, wildly undersized, but you still see him above Rashi Rice, Trey Palmer, both guys not getting a ton of hype. A.T. Perry, Cedric Tillman down at wide receiver 13 was 
disrespectful, but I like to see Parker Washington there at wide receiver 14. Tyler Scott, I think, is one of the most underrated wide receivers in this class at wide receiver 16. And again, you could see like once you get below $3.50, $3 in that price range, it's a lot of guys that they don't expect to have long careers. They don't expect to have a lot of draft capital. They don't expect to be anything but like training camp pieces that might make the 53-man roster, et cetera. And again, you can compare the prices of these rookies to the prices of actual NFL players that have similar price tags. So it's like, just because this guy hasn't been in the league does not mean his price is not actually comparable to players in the league because these prices are based on future projected statistics. Whereas some of the NFL players, it's a mix of what they've done up to that point, the stats that they've banked already, and then the future of their NFL career. They're not ranked differently. Doing this exercise and going through your rankings relative to where they have players to figure out where you're being unrealistic and, and to kind of zone back in a little bit. Let's move over to tight ends and we can see Michael Mayer is in a tier of his his own. If you look at like overall rankings, he is very, very high up there. He is the number six overall flex player. So you have Bijan, you have Jordan Addison, you have JSN, Jameer Gibbs at number five. I think that is a little bit eye opening. He's like relatively down below almost 50 cents less than Addison and JSN, which is about where I have him ranked too. I have him ranked, I think, five overall in one quarterback leagues. In my rankings, he's not a guy that I'm like fucking smitten about taking at the 102 in one quarterback leagues. I like the other wide receivers that I think will go in the first round above of a guy like Jameer Gibbs, but it's Gibbs, Quentin Johnson, and then the next guy up is Michael Mayer. And he's very clearly in a tier of his own as it relates to tight ends. You have Darnell Washington and Dalton Kincaid, Sam Laporta, 2 to $3 less in share price of Michael Mayer. That's probably a projection of where they expect his draft capital to be, which is kind of surprising. Following the combine, you'd think Darnell Washington is almost a lock to be a top 20 pick. Dalton Kincaid, a lot of buzz about him being a first round pick or even a top 15 pick, but maybe that's kind of cooled down since he didn't perform at the combine and he's not performing at their pro day, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Sam Laporta at number four. I love that. He's one of my favorite tight ends in this class. And he's right underneath Dalton Kincaid, which I think is a little bit eye opening. And I'm very glad he's above Luke Musgrave. Luke Musgrave is like Mike Kosicki reincarnated. He's an athlete, but he's not a consummate position master of the tight end spot, which I feel like Sam Laporta is. Tucker Craft above Zach Koontz, but Zach Koontz all the way up at uh, tight end seven, I think is pretty big time relative to the fact that no one knew who the fuck he was right before the combine. Those were the rankings positionally. And if we're looking at like one quarterback the biggest difference is I have in my rankings. They've got Sean Tucker all the way up at number 10. I have Sean Tucker down at like 30, a 20 player gap. Sean Tucker, everything he's done up to this point, not doing the combine, et cetera, makes me feel like he's going to drop into round five as a running back. And that is deadly. Like you don't want to be taking round five running backs in the first round of a rookie draft. Marvin Mims is a dude that I have ranked in the thirties as well. They have him all the way up at 17. So we have a big gap. Luke Musgrave, they have him at 20. I have him down at like 35. They're relatively high on Trey Palmer. They have him as like an early third round pick. I guess if you start factoring in, I took quarterbacks out altogether in the flex rankings. So if you start factoring in quarterbacks or one QB leagues, I think like the Bryce Youngs, the Strouds, the A Riches probably go early third round ish. So that will probably push their ADP back a little bit. But just overall, the biggest differences I have are Sean Tucker, Marvin Mims, Luke Musgrave, Trey Palmer, and AT Perry. I am much lower on those guys than Mojo has them. In terms of being higher on players, I'm much higher on Chase Brown. Cedric Tillman, Tyler Scott, Roshan Johnson, which is uh, pretty interesting. I have him ranked at 19 in a one QB league. So you're talking about mid second round of a one quarterback league, which is definitely where Roshan Johnson will probably end up going, assuming he gets third, fourth round capital. They have him down all the way at 39th overall. So that's pretty wild. I am higher on Evan Hull. I am higher on Michael Wilson than the Mojo app is altogether. And that's it. I just wanted to give you all a different perspective, a different resource, a different free resource. There are not many quality free resources to use in the the dynasty rookie landscape. Everything is behind a paywall, including my bitch ass putting our rookie draft guy behind a paywall. It's only because we spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours building it, paying developers, paying the content creators that help with it, the research that goes into it. So if you have a rookie draft coming up within the next couple months, go cop the rookie draft guide over at bdge.co. You'll see a rookie draft guide drop down. It's like $20, $25, whatever it is. It will help you be wildly prepared for your rookie draft. It is mobile friendly. It's beautiful. Really, really proud of the product that we made this year. But more importantly, go grab Mojo, the Mojo app, free to download. You can actually invest money if you're in New Jersey, but anybody can use and browse the app. Take advantage of the fact that they're paying these really fucking smart dudes a whole lot of money to make rankings for you. All right, that's all I got today. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. Put the D in the subscribe button. Noah will have a video coming out Saturday. We'll have a vlog on Sunday, and I'll see you all back on Monday. All right, I'm out.